I've been preaching the Psalms this Advent. One, because I love them, and they're the songbook of the church, and they reflect the heartbeat of our faith. And two, because these seasons in the church, we use Lent and Advent as small pilgrimages. Lent is the journey toward death and resurrection. Advent is the journey toward the birth of love. So this season, Christ's Advent, is a traveling season, a season on the way. Folks around here have told me that we've expressed this in art before on the bulletin board. There have been a year or two or more where we would put the art of uh, silhouettes of Mary and Joseph. And on the first Sunday of Advent, they start far away from Bethlehem. But as the Sundays go on, the traveling party is drawing closer. It shows us this kind of movement. It feels like we're drawing near. Advent is a season of being on the way. And what do humans do on long treks or long walks or long car rides? When we travel, we tend to sing. Like, if you remember being on a bus in your youth, didn't someone get the song going, 99 bottles of beer on the wall? You're about to pass the time with all those bottles. Or maybe if it's this time of year, you're singing, we wish you a Merry Christmas or Jingle Bells. On trips and traveling, and it's like when we're moving, humans sing. We hum, we project, we pass the time, and we're trying to usually raise the morale in our community song. And that's what the Psalms are for. They're songs on the way, and that's why we chant them in our worship services. Today we chanted from Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim, in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. I like that the lectionary has this as our last psalm before the coming of Christmas. You know when the shepherds will run in from the fields and they have a message? That message is coming to us. Psalm 80 almost anticipates that joy and comfort, this psalm begins with a shepherd. It's God. And the people are pleading, hear us, shepherd, and lead us, shepherd. We will all hear more from shepherds on Saturday night. Today it's still Advent and we're waiting. But look at our wreath. We've kind of gone full circle now from the first Sunday of Advent. We've made it around. And so the circle is complete. You would look at these lights and you'd say, okay, we, we did a lap. What's next? Where are we going from here? And I think that's the cry in our psalm this morning. God, what is next? Many of Israel's ancient songs come from times of desperation and their cry for salvation. It's like what Bob explained in our Isaiah reading. These psalms come from those times with divided kingdoms and people in exile, either with Assyrians taking over or Babylonians. Psalm 80 is noted to be written like near 722 BCE, when people have been exiled. And so we take it from times of utter devastation and loss, this question of, God, what is next? Specifically, the psalm asks, 
Can it be that you hear us now? Can it be your face shining on us? Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us and we shall be saved. Let your face shine. Like I talked with you earlier about being distant from someone and calling them back and saying, I want to be close to you. I need that relationship. The other phrase over and over in the psalm is restore us, O God. Restore us. Translators say that phrase is uh, poetic and translated in different ways. One way we could say it is they're praying, turn us around in restoration. Get us in alignment. It means, God, take us and tweak us. Let's get it right. Let's get God's adjustment. Whatever God wants, move us. We may be going the wrong direction. Or on this hike on the trail, maybe I'm looking at the wrong thing. I think that is uh, Mount Rose. But really, Mount Rose is over there. Okay, God, turn me around. Restore us and let your face shine. So this week with restoration and this touch and this adjustment, it had me thinking about pottery and clay. Like it feels like you could work with clay. I did that in uh, Cappadocia, Turkey in September. We went to a ceramic shop. They have a bunch of clay in the hills. And so they have this old place there. And of course, they put the American on the pottery wheel like, you do it. Let's see you do it. And I'm over there trying to fashion it. And it's going everywhere. People are laughing. But they sold me. I bought some of the ceramics. And when the psalm says, restore us, it feels to me like it's saying, mold us again. Like shape us. Form us into what is right. And you know, our earthly, early story from Genesis, it says that we're made from the clay of the ground. Perhaps we could be made or moved or turned around. Restore us. Another example. With my children this week, we went to a winter celebration with kids. And in the four-year area, they had one of those mini villages set up. And with tiny people and a tiny Starbucks and a train station. But instead of the train going around the village, it had the skiers on the slope, you know. And it had signs, do not touch. And so I looked at that and I said, you know, someone had to put this together. Someone made this playful scene. They turned the Santa this way. They turned the baker with croissants this way. And the skiers, they just push the button and they start going around. Someone set up this this village life that we're watching. Restore us. Turn us around. In Genesis, it starts out saying God speaks and creation happens. But then there's another way to tell it. Genesis chapter 2 kind of starts the story over again. And it's like it slows down. And gets specific and it says, okay, God formed Adam out of Adama, which in Latin becomes God forms humans out of humus. It's, it just means soil and dirt and mud. God takes the stuff of the ground and like makes a person. That's why we pray, remember you are dust and you will return. And this can be a prayer in Advent. God, you're our maker. You form us and fashion us like you do the whole world. So our prayer is restore us, set us upright, move us around. If sin or brokenness or the weight of the world has got my arm all lumpy and weird, then God, come on and fix it. Like patch it up, touch me up. My right shoulder is out of whack. Turn around and restore us. And when that happens, imagine how close the potter is to that piece of clay leaning over with their hands 
letting their face shine. Our psalm is like this Advent circle. It's reached something of an end and it's asking, what is next? And isn't that the kind of question you think the young parents, Mary and Joseph, were asking each other and asking God along their way, God, what is this? What is the plan? What is next? Like our gospel this morning, it says, Mary was found to be with child. That's surprising. And then Joseph finds this. He's surprised. Honorably, he thinks, I won't make a big deal of this, but clearly we're not going to get married now. I'm going to separate quietly. And then an angel with a message from God sort of turns Joseph around. God has formed Mary to be with child. And now Joseph is about to walk away quietly. God turns his thinking around and says, stay, stay here. There's more to come. And it won't be the last time this young couple is turned around as they are trying to be faithful to the birth of new life that's happening with them and with us. They will be turned around on their journey. They have to go all the way to Bethlehem. Soon after, they will have to escape and go all the way to Egypt. Mary will go all the way to the cross with Jesus. Joseph and Mary with this child and on this donkey. Maybe they sang faithful and prayerful songs along the way. Hear us, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us and we shall be saved. Friends, the promise arrives to us this week. We are given the life of God. We will celebrate that the God who forms us is still God with us, that God turns us around, that God's face shines upon us, and that God forms a way of love that is Christ born among us. And we are restored. Amen.